On to this now. The Hawks and Bidvis Protea coin have arrested an alleged kingpin behind the theft of fuel from Transnet's national pipeline. Six more suspects have also been taken into custody. The 35-year-old alleged ringleader was nabbed in the east of Tswani this morning. It comes after his two alleged accomplices were caught with 8,000 litres of fuel in Freda in the Free State over the weekend. Police have also targeted a house in Emalahleni. Well, our reporter, Govan Whittles, uh, was uh, tracking the story for us today, and in a moment will also be joined by the Hawks head, uh, Lieutenant General Godfrey Lebea. Govan, let me kick it off with you. So, quite an extensive operation. Interesting to see the kind of collaboration that the Hawks have entered into with private security. But tell us a little bit more about these suspects and the fuel they've been stealing. How do they go about doing it? Well, what we learned today from the uh, Hawks as well as Bidvest Protea Coin, which is currently guarding the Transnet pipeline, it's a national key point, is that the pipeline is targeted by these suspects who firstly get the information through nefarious purposes, but then uh, travel all the way from Emalasleni to the Free State uh, after planning to conduct this fuel heist and then essentially damage the transnet pipeline. They spring a leak, so to speak, and once they've done this, they pump out fuel uh, from the pipeline, and this is put into tankers, uh, which they have on their property. Today, the Hawks sees two of these tankers, um, and then it's, of course, taken off back to Emelathleni, uh, to the property that we saw today. Uh, it's stored there for a while before being processed and then resold again. And they do this because the Transnet pipeline is targeted by syndicates. And it's only over the last three months where Bidvest Protea Coin has come in on a permanent basis to guard essentially every inch of the pipeline. And this bust we, we, that we saw today is uh, significant because this is the most high-profile result that's come from this operation and essentially this private-public partnership uh, which has emerged in the security services. We've seen this being a hallmark feature of the Ramaphosa administration. Now it's extended to policing, and based on the results, it looks like it's going to be here to stay. General Libya. Just based off what Govan has told us, we have a syndicate here operating in at least two provinces. It's not light work that they have to do in order to get their hands on this fuel. What do you know about how widespread the work of a syndicate like this could be? Thank you and uh, good evening to your uh, viewers. I think what uh, we know is that... Uh, the nature of the crimes that are being committed here are not committed by an individual. An individual alone will not be able to uh, commit these crimes. You'll find that uh, it's not only a driver and a crew, but there are those who are getting involved in the disruption or damaging of uh, the pipes where they have put to steal the uh, Fowl. Once they have done that, you'll find that there are those who will obviously be uh, stealing the tankers so that they are able to transport the fowl to the destination of their choice. In this regard, you have got uh, the individuals that have been uh, arrested. You have got uh, the tanker that obviously is uh, fitted with a false registration plate, then you have got a destination where somebody else is waiting to receive. And if you look at those that normally receive this, financially they look to be well off. So it, it is a crime that is not being committed by an individual. We have been working on these types of uh, crimes uh, for some times, I think 2019, we have created a project that is dealing with the theft from the pipelines. I have to indicate that since then, we have arrested 210 individuals. A number of them are at court. Of course, 12 of them have already been convicted and sentenced. So we are aware that uh, we are dealing with uh, syndicates it cannot be one 
to say number of them because there are those who will be copying from others. Uh, in, in working on this type of uh, crimes, obviously we cannot do it alone as the police. You can see now the involvement of uh, private sector, uh, the various uh, units within the South African police service. You have got the hawks. You have got those coming from the uh, traffic uh, departments. You have got units at uh, the NIU. And we obviously uh, work closely with the National Prosecuting Authority who must be guiding as to where must these cases be processed. Like uh, the fowl is stolen in the Free State, it is found in the Mpumalanga. We have got some of these matters that are happening in KwaZulu Natal. Obviously, uh, this is how a uh, syndicate operates. Godfrey Libya, uh, uh, apologies, General Libya, I just wanted to, 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 to check with you. So when you have then been able to affect these arrests and, and you're talking about this partnership uh, that you have with the various entities, how does the private security um, that's guarding the Transnet infrastructure then fit into all of this? I would imagine that you know, they're governed by a completely different set of legislation to what the Hawks are. So how do you manage the, this relationship? We are all interested in securing the attendance of the accused persons uh, in court. We are the ones who will be uh, executing arrests, and they also have got uh, the power in terms of their laws to, as citizens, to also uh, effect arrest where necessary if we are not in the uh, near vicinity. But as you know, when these uh, operations are taking place, we inform each other. They assist us. They have got a better mode of transport. Uh, there are mechanisms to be observing which they are in a better situation because their focus is on these uh, networks. So there is an arrangement that uh, we, our target are the same. We have got the same objective of stopping these activities from happening. So we collaborate with them. There is no problem in collaboration. Even the ordinary citizens uh, who provide us with the information, we work with everybody. All right. Govan, let me bring you back in here. And the big question, of course, is that if you have the theft going on, there must be a market that has been created for it. Who is buying this fuel? What we've learned from some of the people who are looking into these crimes is that they're paying more closer attention to fuel outlets where the legislation or the oversight um, determining the integrity of the fuel that's been bought uh, is not as strict as some of the bigger multinational corporations. So in short, they're looking at whether this fuel is being sold to the smaller petrol stations in far-flung areas that are perhaps not franchised uh, to the big multinational conglomerates where accountability over where the fuel is purchased from is necessary. But at the same time, they're also looking at whether or not this fuel is not being used in other crimes by other criminal syndicates to finance their crimes, firstly, but also to be used in transnational crime and move around uh, with stolen vehicles, uh, which they can't necessarily take to the traditional fuel stations to get refilled. Those are just some of the areas that they're looking into, but what's been clear is they're not only looking into where it's being stolen or by whom it's being stolen, but how the uh, value chain, so to speak, develops once the fuel has been repackaged and resold by the syndicate. General Levere, Transnet, of course, will, will welcome these arrests uh, because part of what it means is that we can anticipate less damage to the infrastructure, Transnet infrastructure. Another state entity that, of course, has been bleeding millions as a result of uh, these syndicates is, is ESCOM. And again, we know about the way in which that infrastructure has been damaged. How much progress would you say you're making there? Yeah, uh, today we have been uh, in Parliament uh, briefing the scope on the work that uh, we are doing uh, together with uh, the ESCOM itself 
as well as uh, the SIU. So there is obviously a number of uh, investigations that uh, we have undertaken. Uh, we were also indicating several cases that have been uh, placed on the court roll. And uh, some of the accused persons obviously have already been convicted. Uh, we are continuously working on this. We prioritize some of the cases that uh, involve ESCOM uh, are obviously investigated by the serious commercial crime, some in the serious organized crime, including the possible sabotage, while some are in the uh, corruption, serious corruption space. You will also recall that uh, some of the cases that uh, we are talking about include uh, the one uh, accused who is known as uh, Tagudi. I'm just uh, mentioning but one example of those that uh, we have made it public uh, when we were briefing the SCOPA today. So we are working closely on this, like uh, we have prioritized these cases of uh, involving translate. Those that involve ESCOM are also prioritized. All right. Let's leave it there for tonight. Hawkshead, Godfrey Liria and our reporter Govan Whittles that uh, was there as some of those arrests were being effected.